Welcome to the Middle Room Workshop. Today I will show you how to make 3D engravings. In particular, I will show you how I made the 3D engraving that you saw in my video review about the Nege Max 4. Without further ado, let's get into it. Familiar. To make 3D engravings, you will need a CAM software to produce your toolpath and then you will also need a control software to launch your project and control your machine. Today I'm going to use Fusion 360 since it is the most common 3D modeling and CAM software used in the hobby industry, but you can use any CAM software you'd like, so whether that would be uh, Inventor with a CAM package or Master CAM, you name it. And as a control software, I'm going to use Lightburn. Now, Lightburn is not particularly suited to work with 3D toolpath, but it can stream our projects without problems. Now, the first thing you will need to do is to model your surface. Uh, if it is something you uh, will create, perhaps machine, it should be a relatively simple thing to do. If the surface you wish to engrave instead already exists, then you can either take measurement, 3D scan it, uh, or even go for photogrammetry. Now, this is not something that I'm going to show you here. Therefore, I assume you know how to get your surface, how to model it, or how to import it in Fusion 360. So once you got your surface, and you can see over here, I'm going back to my surface, as you can see. Um, you will then just need to give it some thickness, okay? And I will also suggest you to make a face, a flat face at the bottom that can be used for uh, reference when we are going to set up our uh, tooling. And so in my project, I basically created uh, also the uh, side panel since this is something that I've uh, uh, basically created. Now in this example, I'm going to show you a simple text outline as you can see over here, but this uh, will basically apply to anything else. Um, and so uh, what you're going to do, you're going to select a plane that makes sense uh, with your project. So in my particular case, I'm uh, parallel to one of the uh, origin surfaces, origin uh, uh, planes. Um, and I basically uh, simply added a sketch with written Nige Max 4, as you can see here. Now, here is a very important note to remember, which will define how we'll proceed forward and what strategy to follow. Now, ideally at this point, we could use a simple projection onto the surface and then work from there. However, depending on the curvature and the slope of your surface, the simple projection may not be suitable for your project. Now, the problem is the, the projection maps a 2D sketch onto a 3D surface along a vector or a straight line, okay? So that would be uh, like watching basically from the top. And so what you are seeing here will basically be projected uh, straight down onto the surface. In doing so, you lose dimensional accuracy. Now to give you a simple example, imagine projecting a line onto the surface of a cylinder. Uh, basically the surface length of the line will be shorter and the deviation will increase uh, depending on the curvature and the slope angle relative to your sketch. Now in this particular case it is a small overall area here um, also we are not having large uh, curvature and also this project is not dimensionally sensible since it's going to be a simple uh, non-functional engraving. Um, however Depending on your situation, you might want to uh, consider that. So if you need accuracy, you will need a projection uh, that basically works around the surface. That is similar to, uh, let me show you what decals would do. As you can see, decals will basically wrap and follow the uh, surface precisely. Okay, so if, the, if this is something that you are after, Unfortunately, as far as I know, there is no tool in uh, Fusion 360 that can do that, but there are tricks to achieve that. Now, I'm not going to show you that here. Um, I'll just show you that that's possible. As you can see over here, I have my 
uh, basically points onto the surface. Um, now, if you're interested to uh, see how that is done, um, I can plan a video tutorial to show you this uh, workaround. Now, with this out of the way, we can follow the projection strategy. Okay, and so in this case, we can jump right into the uh, manufacturing environment in Fusion 360. So let's go over here and manufacture. Now here you will first need to uh, set up your stock size, origin and orientation. So to do that, you will click on to uh, set up. As you can see, I have already set all this up. So let me double click on it. And now as a, for the stock size, since I'm not really going to machine this thing, I did a fixed uh, position or actually in this case I did a relative position with zero offset so that's basically the bounding uh, volume uh, and then for the origin I basically place myself onto the lower left corner here and Z pointing upward okay so this is an important thing to remember however uh, your strategy it's up to you how you want to uh, set this up. Once that is done, let me close this up. You will see that under fabrication we have cutting to the profile. Now basically Fusion 360 has a laser strategy however it only works for 2D profiles and therefore is not going to be suitable for our application. So the strategy that I've used is a simple uh, project engraving which you can see over here and that is under milling 3d and you will see project and this is also giving you the explanation of what it does okay now for this you could go right away with project engraving select the surface select your geometry and you're good to go however i noticed that sometime doesn't really uh, produce uh, what you are looking for and so what I did before is to do a little bit of roughing with a parallel strategy over here. You can see under 3D parallel, this shows you what it does. Okay, so this is basically scanning parallel to the XY and it's producing this. Now for this, I've used a 20 millimeters ball hand mill, as you can see over here under the tools, which you can select. Okay. And I have left everything in default. Now, this is not really something that we will need since we are not going to machine it. So you can leave everything in default. All I care about is that now I have my nice surface worked out. Okay. Now, next with the surface uncovered, uh, we can go for the project strategy and I will show you over here. This is the one. Let me double click on it. Now here I've used the three millimeter ball hand mill. Okay, very simple. We don't care. Anyway, this is just going to follow the outline of the text. So it can be as big as you want. It doesn't matter. Uh, now here, uh, as a geometry, I've selected the uh, text that I want, okay, to go onto the surface. That's all I did. Uh, back to the tool here, feed and speeds. Now here we will need to change the feeds and speeds. Now for spindle speed, I put 900, uh, RPM, this will correspond in the laser machine to 90% power. Okay. Then we are going to change the cutting feed rate, lead in and lead out to whatever we want our engraving speed. Since in this case, I'm going for engraving, uh, our engraving speed to be. And so in my case is 4,000 millimeters per minute. And then for the free movement speed, uh, that will correspond in this case to ramp and plunge feed rate. I set all this to 600 millimeters per minute. Now, this is basically going to output numbers on your G code that will correspond to the expected parameters without having to uh, do some post processing onto your G code file. Okay, uh, then uh, we covered already the geometry. For the heights, make sure to have your top to the surface top and your bottom to the reference bottom. In this case, this is the entire thing that I'm going to place on my working area. And so that's at minus 25 millimeters. And then keep the retract height a little bit higher than your top and your clearance height a little bit higher than that. 
Once this is done, we can go ahead and export our project. So let me click on OK right now here. Um, actually, you can uh, simulate that. Select your project toolpath and then click on simulate. There we go. And click on play and you will see how this goes. And you can even slow it down. As you can see, you can watch it from here and you can see all of the movement. So this is, this corresponds to what we expect and we can exit the simulation. All right, so now uh, we only care about the project toolpath. And so we are going to right click there and then post process. Now here you will want to look for uh, post GRBL. If you don't see it here, just choose it from library. Now you will notice that there is GRBL laser and then GRBL. Now GRBL laser is not going to work since our strategy is not uh, for laser. Uh, so you are going to basically uh, select GRBL, okay? Uh, then you will want to set up your preference, just uncheck output M6 and output tool number, then uh, give the units, name your uh, file and click on post to export. Now with this done, it is time to preview your file, the file you just exported. Now, if we open Lightburn and we import the file, okay, this is my last version. This is basically going to show you the file. However, Lightburn doesn't offer any 3D visualization. Basically what you see is a, is a flattened version of the G code that you imported. Now, what I recommend you is to use either a software like Candle, as you can see over here, Candle shows you uh, how this should look like or UGS, okay, uh, you name it. Or if you don't have any of the two, you can use MC Viewer. This is an online free MC Viewer, as it says. So you will simply need to select your file and drop it in. Now here you will see your project. Now here you will want to make sure that everything looks the way you expect, the way you uh, design it for. Here you will also see the starting point, as you can see. And here you can also see the code, you know? Now, as I said, Lightbarn, at the time of recording this video, only allows you to stream the G code to the machine. Therefore, we will need to set out our custom coordinate system manually. So this is what usually the machine reads when we send a G code. And I can actually show you that using the online previewer you can see here. So basically before any movement start, the machine moves to the custom coordinate system, which is G54. Or you can also view this by viewing the G code itself into a code editor. Okay, you can see over here is the same thing. And so we will manually need to set up this G54. Okay, so back in Lightbarn in this case, you can use this to work but you can also delete it. You don't really need it. All you need is actually the outline, the box that represent, if we go back into Fusion and we look from up, represent the overall outline of your project. And this is where it's going to basically start. So that's what you care about. And so what you can do, you can design, let me remove this. You can design basically your box give it the dimension it is supposed to be in my case it's a 200 times 60 then select the two things center them and so now you know that wherever this is going to be okay your zero position is going to be here in this corner and then the laser head should move and start your engraving so this is just for reference and we will need this in order to frame the project and find our starting coordinate system. So first thing first, uh, let's connect the machine. Now the first thing we will need to do is to home the machine. If you just started it, it automatically homes, so you are good to go. Then you will need to go over to the console tab over here and type dollar sign pound, enter. Now this is going to return all of the EEPROM stored parameter, including the G54 that we will need to manipulate, as you can see over here. Now make sure that this is 
all set to zero. Otherwise, you will need to reset this. Now, I have designed a very simple uh, reset macro here, and this is simply sending this code g10 l2p1 x0 y0 z0. So I will copy that, I will paste it in, and enter. Now, to verify that, again, dollar sign pound, and you will see that our g54 is now set to zero. After that, we can start moving our project around, we can start uh, framing. And this will help us aligning ourselves with the workpiece. And what, once we are happy with the alignment and we know we are on the right spot, make sure to jog to the lower left corner or wherever your region happen to be, okay? So this will correspond to where you set your origin in the setup here in Fusion. So as you can see, they are on my lower left corner, okay? Uh, so this is very important, okay? Um, and so once you're here, uh, you will need to go over to the Move tab and then Get Position. So this is going to basically return your current position, which corresponds to the uh, custom origin or the starting point for your project, okay? So you will want to take note of these two numbers and now we are ready to go over to console and I will paste again the same code as before and now here we will go and input the numbers we saw we just found from the uh, move tab so 111 118 okay now for the z-axis you will need to calculate it now I have a video showing exactly how to work with the z-axis, so I recommend you watching that if some things are not clear. But in short, you will need your uh, module homing height uh, with reference to your honeycomb. Uh, in my case, it is 66 millimeter. Then you will need to subtract the focus height, which is for the Nijemax 4, 23 millimeters then subtract the workpiece height, in my case it is 25 millimeters plus three millimeter, which is the play wood that I placed beneath it. And finally, I've added one millimeter of Z offset uh, so as to make the engraving line a little bit wider. And my total value is 16 millimeter. Now, since we are going to move the laser module downward, we are going to put a negative sign there, so minus 16. And this is Pretty much the way you go. So now with this done we can open and stream our uh, g-code the one we got from uh, Fusion 360. So to do that we'll click on run g-code, let's select our g-code. Now bear in mind that once you click open the project is going to be streamed or launched str uh, straight away. So you have no additional control, no additional prompt. Something helpful if you are unsure, you might want to run this with some scrap first and check uh, that the starting position and the Z movement are right. Now this is what I did the first time I tried this out with, uh, with this laser engraver because you get no additional control over your imported G-code in Lightburn. And so just to make sure that uh, I wasn't going to ruin up my workpiece, uh, I put some cartoon under and I run the uh, test first. All right, as you can see, uh, the process is relatively simple. Now, if you have some familiarities with CAM, especially uh, with the CAM environment in Fusion 360, this should be a very simple project to tackle. However, if you haven't ever worked with it or you don't have any familiarities uh, with uh, CAM in Fusion 360, I highly recommend you to go ahead and look for some a couple of basic tutorials. This should really give you all you need in order to tackle 3D engraving projects. 
Along with it, I also recommend you uh, to have a look to Kendall or UGS. They are free software designed to uh, control CNC machine. They are very, very simple to use and they will make the overall process much simpler to implement, especially when it comes to setting up your coordinate system without having to really hard code your G54 coordinate system. All right, I hope you found my video helpful, informative. Um, if you have any comment, leave them in the comment section below. And do not forget to subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more video about laser engraving, CNC machining, 3D printing, and much, much more. Ciao for now.